My name is Francesca Paradisi and I'm a lecturer for the School of Chemistry and Chemical Biology and today I'm going to talk about enzymes and I'm going to explain to you everything about enzymes, everything I know about enzymes. Okay. An enzyme is a biological molecule, it's a molecule that is found in living organisms, a molecule that has the property of speeding up reactions in the organism where it's produced. Okay? So enzymes have this ability of taking one molecule plus another molecule, putting them together or modifying one molecule into a second molecule at a much higher rate. Otherwise the reaction won't happen. Okay? So the enzyme has this ability, it's known as a biological catalyst. The fact that enzymes are biological catalysts allows for life to be as is. So we can have um, reactions taking place, like in the food digestion, you can eat something and it gets digested and broken down into much smaller pieces, and then the smaller pieces are available to the organism or to your body to be built up in the new molecules that your body requires, and you don't get them from food. Okay, so enzymes are essential for life in general. I see the great advantage in using, in trying to use uh, enzymes against chemical catalysts in the fact that enzymes are biodegradable. So instead of using uh, something, a molecule, which is made in the lab, which might contain metals, for example, which are not biodegradable, you can use something that performs the same reaction, and when you're finished with your reaction, you can throw the reaction mixture in the sink and nothing will happen because it's biodegradable, so you're not uh, polluting the environment. It's a more environmentally friendly way of performing the same, same type of reaction. Of course, there are disadvantages in using the enzymes in uh, synthetic chemistry. And the disadvantages are mostly due to the fact that enzymes are not born for working in a chemistry environment. Okay? No, they are not suitable for reactions that normally takes place in organic solvents. They are usually working in a biological system where water is the major component. So there isn't much of a compatibility there. So one of the main issues is not being stable, not being able to survive the working conditions required by a chemist. On the other hand, enzymes can be now produced in such an amount that it's um, possible at least try to work with them in a chemical environment. And the other disadvantage that you can see from the chemistry point of view is that an enzyme is extremely specific, so it only works with its own recognized substrate or molecule, the molecule that the enzyme recognizes, and transforms it into one specific product. That is the beauty of enzymes as well. can decide to study and work with enzymes from any organisms you can think of. Because we have techniques nowadays that allow for uh, the production on a, in a lab scale, or maybe even in some cases in an industrial scale, of enzymes coming from different type of organisms. In my specific case, bacteria are the source of the enzymes that I'm going to study and the, the organisms that I'm working with to produce uh, enzymes I'm interested in. Working with bacteria is probably a little bit easier than working with, say, mammalian cells, uh, which are uh, cells in mammals. Bacteria grow very fast, so you can have a very high turnover and a very high production of the enzyme you are interested in. I think that the idea of bringing enzymes into the chemistry work um, still has a good bit to go. There are some enzymes that are currently used by chemists, but they're not a lot, um, and they are only limited to a few reactions. So there, are, there isn't a high variety of enzymes available to chemists. And this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to create and invent and discover and analyze, describe new enzymes, uh, which we think will be much better suited to the chemist for its own work. The main problem is the fact that we have an enzyme that would ideally work in aqueous solutions, in water, and we want to take this enzyme and let it work in organic solids. This is a big problem. So what we are doing here is that we are changing the source of the enzyme. We are trying to find an organism 
that will be able to be much more tolerant to organic solvents. And where do we find these organisms? Some organisms are called extremophiles, which means that they are growing under extreme conditions. One example is, for example, uh, organisms that are growing in uh, uh, very uh, hot environments, like hot springs or volcanic areas. These are called thermophiles. The one I'm working with are going into highly salted water, uh, highly salted environments, like the Dead Sea, for example, or Salt Lake in the States, and they're called halophiles. And the characteristic that they have is that a very highly salted environment is much more similar to a solvent uh, reaction, a reaction which contains solvents, than those of pure water. So it's been already proven that enzymes uh, extracted from halophilic organisms, the one we are working with from the salted solution, have a better activity in solvents than even in, uh, in aqueous system. So these are the ones we are working with. And what we are doing is once we are able to culture them in the lab, we can pick one of these little colonies and we can uh, grow them in a much higher amount in a liquid environment, so in a liquid flask, where we have a nutrient broth and uh, inoculate one of these colonies into that flask and let it go. So we are taking this plate and we are putting into a liquid medium, which is then shaken at a controlled temperature. Over time, the bacteria will grow. And you can see that the color here is not quite as pink as what we have on the plates, but it's getting there. It takes some time for the color to develop. Okay? And this is just an indicator of how much you have in your solution. Once we have done this step, so this takes maybe a couple of days to grow, we are gonna look into the cells, so we're gonna break the cells open. Maybe you can see that it's quite cloudy. This wouldn't be the situation if there was no bacteria growing into this liquid. We can precipitate these cells, collect the cells, break them open, and then study what's inside that cell. The difficulty in our case is that these proteins have never been produced before, so there is not enough information out there for us to work with. So we have to create and generate our own knowledge on this type of enzyme. So first of all, what we are doing is that we are taking a solution similar to what you have seen before, which contains the inside of the cells, okay? So we are breaking the cells open. Inside the cells there is water content, which we are extracting, and then we are testing that for activity. And we are screening a variety of compounds. What we want to see is a darker spot in this gel with respect to the background, because obviously there will be tons of other enzymes that any organisms will produce, but the one we're interested in hopefully will be there in higher amount because of the uh, process, the engineering that we have done to that organism. This red color, this is our cells which are being, being concentrated, and then we break them open and we have a look and see if there is any activity. Of course, as I said, the enzymes will catalyze the reaction, will speed up the reaction, and this is what we're going to look at in here. So the idea is that we take one of our substrate, we mix a little bit of our solution coming from those bacteria with the substrate and see if we do have any response, okay? Is there anything that is telling us that the reaction is actually working? So maybe you can see here um, one of the reactions that has, is taking place. And what's happening here, we are monitoring the formation of our product, okay? So what we are doing here, we are transforming an alcohol, ethanol, into uh, the corresponding aldehyde, which is called uh, acetaldehyde. What you can tell is that you have certainly a signal that is increasing over time, an increase in the substance that we are observing. This is a very good signal, this is a very good um, spectrum, which tells us that upon adding uh, our enzyme to our substrate, we are generating a product, and over time, the product increases in its concentration. So we've been very lucky, we actually have found activity for our novel enzymes, and hopefully this will be just a step before going into the lab, into a chemistry lab, where we can then uh, apply what we have found to chemical reactions. I think that the reason why this is important is because a lot of pharmaceutical companies are now going towards the direction of biocatalysis. When you're using an enzyme as a catalyst, you don't call it anymore a catalyst, which is a more chemical uh, term that you're using. 
what you are defining is a biocatalyst because it's a catalyst which works in a biological system. You're just using it for your own research now in the lab to try and do the same reactions that you were doing before in a traditionally chemical manner. Okay? So the reason why this matters is that because we are now uh, trying to prevent further pollution to the environment. And the enzymes, the fact that they are biodegradable, will be a big step forward into that direction.